I guess that figure skating doesn't have a whole lot of like funding behind it. So do you have like nutritionists with you and psychologists and we've, all that sort of thing? We've worked with people yeah. in the past. We have a, we have a psychologist as well. Um, and we've, we've actually just had a nutrition lecture this morning. But uh, you pick up, with nutrition, you pick up a lot of things yeah. over. We, through, um, through the team doctor, actually, we met, we met um, a nutritionist where um, one of the places she works in London who, who's helped us out in the past, actually. So we've got contact with, with her and then we had a nutrition lecture today. So. And we actually work with a psychologist regu regularly now. Just, uh, okay. We've just started working with ours and he, um, he specialises in um, teams, like couples. Oh. So yeah, so he works with like badminton, tennis, synchronised swimming, that kind of thing. So um, he's, he's been really good with us. Simon Drain. Simon Drain. Simon yeah. Drain, okay. I was wondering if he works with, who was it, like, was it Adcock and Bankier that, that won like a, a badminton medal the other day? Yeah, in Hong Kong, yeah. He, yeah, he, he works with them as well? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, if he can do that and get them to beat the Chinese, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you're in. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> this isn't our sort of peak games. We're, we're sort of looking towards 2018. So for this, we just want to go out there and just show ourselves off as contenders for the next Olympics. One of the things I'm particularly interested in is like women and young girls taking up sport and things like that. And it's obviously a problem in the news a lot at the moment. I would presume that ice skating is very different and that you've got more women, girls, young girls taking up the sport than boys. Is that the case or not? I would say so, yeah. You do see um, a lot of boys and girls starting initially, but then I think um, as, as they get a little bit older, because of like the stigma of it for boys, it's perhaps a bit harder for them to continue, which is such a shame, because you know, it is a sport, it is very different, and it would be nice to have like more male athletes out there. What about something like dancing on ice? Does that in, has that encouraged people to take up skating or not so much? Definitely, yeah, it's been a, it's been a big help. It's encouraged a lot of interest uh, in the foundations coming through the, uh, the Learn to Skate courses across the country. So it's been a, a huge help. And I think, we'll, you know, we'll see the benefit of that, I think, in a, in a few years as some of those, you know, younger skaters that have mm. learned to love skating are coming through the ranks now. So okay. hopefully we're going to benefit from it in a few years. And you two have obviously skated together for uh, what, eight years, did, did I overhear you say? <laughs> um, telepathic? Do you know what each other's thinking? You know? It's strange because <laughs> not quite know what each other's thinking, but you know, you, you get to say, you sometimes finish each other's sentences off because we spend so much time with each other. Yeah, and with like, things like interviews as well. Like, we, we, I, I know what he's going to say, and he'll probably know what I'm going to say, and things like that. So, yeah, we, well, we spend a lot of time together. Um, so you're you're, ba you're bound to you you do create like a special bond you know we, we live together we work together we train together so you know it's it's something that is very intimate um, but you know we're very lucky because we do get along very well and we do enjoy spending time together. The gala thing that you have at the end of the competition, I was just asking the others, when on earth do you get time to practice for that? Because it's such fun, but you know when do you get time to practice? We don't really. Like <laughs> <laughs> you don't. That's the thing. You have to prioritise. You've got to, you know, people want to see your, your routines and your performances properly, so you have got to take priority. We literally did a half an hour on our routine before we came Thursday afternoon because we knew we were going to have to do it. And you can't come and look stupid, especially when you've just been <laughs> crowned British champions and is the best in Britain and you go out and make a fool of yourself. So you have to make sure you know what you're doing, but you can't give too much priority to it, can you? Especially when there's two of you as well, because, you know, if we were skating by ourselves, we could just sort of improvise it a little bit. But, you know, we have to make sure that we're both doing the same thing. So <laughs> At least roughly. We'd, yeah. <laughs> so we, do, we need a plan. But, you know, we, we actually sort of did a little bit on the ice and worked it out a little bit on the floor too, so we had a plan. <laughs> just before I, I skate, we like sort of, we both look at each other and say, just enjoy it. Like, how lucky are we to be able to, you know, be at Olympic Games, to s do something we love every day and perform to all these people and, you know, just go and enjoy it. This is what you work for. There's no point worrying or stressing over it. Just go out and have fun. Yeah. So Those experiences are once in a lifetime. Exactly. Uh, so you, you'd be a fool not to take everything in and try and enjoy it as much as possible. I mean, you're, you're super nervous, but at the same time, there's thousands of people watching you and, you know, you just have to try and enjoy it as much as you possibly can. Yeah. By the way, I haven't actually asked how you are because I thought you might be bored of the question. Oh, no, <laughs> but I really right. should ask you, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, yeah. I'm absolutely fine. Yeah. I was fine after, after a week, really. I was on the ice after a week. That's crazy. Um, yeah, it was amazing what they... What they did really, they went, yeah. in, went in through my groin, cauterised a, a nerve that 
shouldn't be there in my heart. Yeah. And, and Job stops. done. So does that? I saw the BBC thing yeah. that Ollie did. So does that like USB stick size thing it, stay yeah. there? Stays in? Like um, it can be in for up to two years, but they don't right. actually need it in anymore. It's just that they're going to monitor me for the next. Well, until after World Championships, they'll take it out after World Championships, I think. Because, okay. again, to take it out, they have to cut me open and I can't do lifts for a, a week or two and right. it kind of interrupts training. So right. it doesn't bother me now, so it's just going to stay in until after World Championships. The only thing I was thinking is, because it does stick out a little bit, I mean, you're obviously all over the shop, you know, going up and down and all the rest of it. Yeah. Do, you, do you not sort of nud, sorry, but nudge it or, you know... No. Does, do you, are you aware of it when you're doing stuff like that? Not, not really, very rarely. At, at first it was a bit strange, but you yeah. know, I'm used to it now. But I, you know, I don't, that's not really a place that I, I, I go. But we, 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 um, we did have a, a lift exit that we, where I was going to sit on the shoulder and then um, sort of flip off from. Yeah. But um, we haven't put that in the programme because, because of... Um, uh, okay. There's some it things it's sore. affected slightly, yeah. mm. but... But Not that was that's like the only thing that we noticed it for. But we're actually going to put it back in after this. So yeah. uh, okay. Before you had that done, you were having problems. Like, was it with breathing? And it, was, it was like so. Um, you knew you had something. Yeah, okay. and it would, it would beat in a in a regular way that yeah. you know, not experienced before. So I knew something was something was happening. Yeah. Um, and they could never catch it on. I wore twenty four hour monitors. Uh, I wore a seven day monitor mm. um, and nothing ever came on because it was so it was so rare really mm. um, and then they decided to put this thing in um, you know, stay in for two years to try and catch something and then luckily okay. they did so. so how long have you had it for then? since July oh right uh, so and it's, it's been quite because it's happened thing. quite frequently this year that's why they decided oh. to do something about it right. uh, so it was only July that I had it put in and uh, it, they, they caught a few episodes um, so that's why they decided to get it sorted out. Oh, how did you feel for all this? <laughs> I think it was quite scary at first because, you know, it's the unknown, everyone's scared of that. But actually when we found out exactly what was wrong with him, he was sort of in and out in the hospital within a day and mm. back on the ice within a week. So it all went really well and it was quite quick. So, mm. you know, we're, we're just sort of relieved now that it's done and that, right. that thought isn't at the back of our minds anymore. You know, we know exactly what it is and it's cured now. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs>